Hey everyone, welcome to my another Convolutional Neural Networks tutorial and this will be my first video about CNNs and it's only a theoretical introduction to CNNs and practical I'll do later in another tutorial there will be TensorFlow introduction and basic object detection with CNNs introduction so you'll see what doesn't matter right now but there will be many cool stuff soon so take a moment to observe and look around you even if you're sitting still on your chair or lying on your bed, your brain is constantly trying to analyze the dynamic world around you. Without your conscious effort, your brain is continuously making predictions and acting upon them. After just a brief look at this photo, you identify that there is a restaurant at the beach that's beautiful, yeah? You immediately identified some of the objects in the scene as plate, table, light. You probably also guess that weather is excellent to take a night walk and how were you able to make those predictions? How did you identify the numbers, objects in the picture, I, I guess? Well, it took nature million years of evolution to achieve this remarkable feat. Our eye and our brain work in perfect harmony to create such beautiful visual experiences. The system which makes this possible for us in the eye are our visual pathway and the visual cortex inside our brain. So there is a system inside us which allows us to make sense of the pictures you can see here and all other visual recognition tasks we perform every day. So we have been doing this since our childhood. We were taught to recognize a dog, a cat or a human being. Can we teach computers to do so? Can we make a machine which can see and understand as well as human do? Answer is total yes. Similar to how a child learned to recognize objects, we need to show an algorithm millions of pictures before it is able to generalize the input and make predictions for images it has never seen before. Computers, we can say that they see the world in a different way than we do. They can only see anything in the form of numbers and it looks something like this it's terrible to teach computer to make sense out of this array of numbers is a challenging task computer scientists have spent decades to build systems algorithms and modules which can understand images today in the era of artificial intelligence and machine learning we have been able to achieve remarkable success in identifying objects and images identifying the context of image and detect emotions and well etc one of the most popular algorithm is used in computer vision today is convolutional neural networks that's what exactly i'm talking in my this tutorial video so convolutional neural networks have a different architecture than regular neural networks usually uh, neural networks transform an input by putting it through a series of hidden layers every layer is made up of a set of neurons where each layer is fully connected to all neurons in the layer before Finally, there is a last fully connected layer, the output layer, that represents the predictions. Convolutional neural networks are a bit different. First of all, the layers are organized in three dimensions, width, height, and depth. Further, the reason is one layer do not connect to all neurons in the next layer, but only to a small region of it. And lastly, the final output will be reduced to a single vector of probability scores organized along the depth dimension so sentence is composed of two major parts first of them is feature extraction so in this part the network will perform a series of convolutions and pooling operations during which the features are detected if you had a picture of a zebra this is the part where the network would recognize its stripes two ears and four legs and another part is classification, as you can he see here. So uh, here is the fully connected layer that will serve as a classifier on top of these extended features. They will assign a probability for the object on the image, being what the algorithm predicts it is truly is. There are squares and lines inside the red dotted region, which we will break it down later in my this tutorial. 
The green circles inside the blue dotted region named classification is the neural network or multilayer perception which acts as classifier. The input to this network comes from the preceding part named feature extraction. Feature extraction is, is the part of CNN's architecture. As you can see this part, uh, from here this network derives its name. Convolution is the mathematical operation which is central to the efficiency of the algorithm. Let's understand on a high level that happens in the red eclosion region. The input to the red region is the image which we want to classify and the output is a set of features. Think of features as attributes of the image. For instance, an image of a cat might have features like whiskers, two ears, four legs, well, and many more, etc. And for example, a handwritten digit image might have features or horizontal and vertical lines or loops or curves and whatever, many more. So later we'll see how to extract such features from our images. So what is truly that convolution we are talking about? So convolution is a performed on our input image using a filter or a kernel. To understand filtering and convolution, you will have to scan the screen starting from top left to the right, moving down a bit after covering the width of the screen and repeating the same process until you are done scanning the whole screen. For instance, if the input image and the filter look like following in this capture, so here filter is a green and the image is blue. So the filter multiplies its own values with the overlapping values of the image while sliding over it and adds all of them up to the output a uh, single value for each overlap unit until the entire image is traversed. So how we receive this for example for there is another example as you can see and how we convolve this. So here is for example our filter there was numbers our filter also has numbers and it's convoluted by that that we multiply first window with uh, our filter first window and we receive a result, result for example 1 then we receive 0 then again we receive 1 then 0 1 0 0 0 and z and 1 and when you sum all of these results we receive 4 so we do all of this for all the windows so note that the top left value which is 4 in the output matrix depends only on the 9 values 3 by 3 on the top left of the original image matrix. It does not change even if the rest of the values in the image change. This is the receptive field of this output value or neuron in our CNN. Each value in our output matrix is sensitive to only a particular region in our original image. In the case of image with multiple channels, for example, it's here, the kernel has the same depth as that of the input image. So matrix multiplication is performed between all of these images and three different filters. And all the results are assumed with the bias to give us a squashed one depth channel convolutional feature output. As you can see here is we have one image with, with three channels and what we receive as a result is also uh, we can say one image, but now it's by one channel. So each neuron in output matrix has overlapping receptive fields. The animation in this slide will give you a better sense of what happens in convolutional. Convolutionally, the first convolutional layer is responsible for capturing the low-level features such as edges, colors, gradient orientation, and etc. With added layers, the architecture adapts to high-level features, as well giving us a network which has the whole sum understanding of images in the dataset, similar to, to how we would understand the image. So another thing. I should mention that there is two types of results to operation. One is 
one in which the convolutional uh, feature is reduced in dimensionality as compared to the input, and the other is which the dimensionality is either increased or remains the same. This done is applying weighted padding or same padding in the case of the latter. Later, in above, in, in this example, our padding is one, as you can see. So when we augment the 5 by 5 by 1 image into 7 by 7 by 1 image and then we apply the filter of 3 by 3 by 1 kernel over it we find that the convolute matrix turns out to be of dimension 5 by 5 by 1 it means our output image is with the same dimension as our output image it means same padding on the other hand if we perform the same operation without padding and the output will receive an image with the reduced dimensions. So our 5 by 5 by 1 image will become 3 by 3 by 1. It gets very small. So next I will talk about a simple example. As you can see in this slide, let's say we have a handwritten digit image like the one you can see here. You want to extract out only the horizontal edges or lines from the image. We'll use a filter or kernel which then convolved with the original image dims out all those areas which do not have horizontal edges. Notice how the output image only has the horizontal white line and the rest of the image is dimmed. The kernel here is like a peephole which is a horizontal slit similarly for a vertical edge extractor. The filter is like a vertical slit peep hole and the output would look like you can see here. There is the input, there is our filter and there is an output. Two different filters for the same image give us two different outputs. Another thing is non-linearity. After sliding our filter over the original image, the output which we got passes through another mathematical function which is called an activation function. The activation function usually used is in most cases in CNN. Future extraction is RELU, which stands for Rectified Linear Unit, which simply converts all of the negative values to zero and keeps the positive values the same. As you can see here from my slide, it's kind of obvious what it does. So, after passing the output through RELU function, they would look like this. Before uh, Relu, it was, well, it's what dimmed image, and after here, after our filter, and after applying Relu, we, we see that it's only a straight vertical line, you can see, and in another example, we can see two horizontal lines. So, for a single image, con by convolving it with multiple filters, we can get multiple output images. For the, for the handwritten digit, here we applied a horizontal edge extractor and a vertical edge extractor and got two output images. We can apply several other filters to generate more such output images which are also referred as feature maps. This should be kind of understandable. So next thing is pooling. After convolutional layer, once you get the feature map, it is common to add a pooling or a subsampling layer in, in CNNs. Similar to the convolutional layer, the pooling layer is responsible for reducing the spatial size of the convolved features. This is to decrease the computational power required to process the data through dimensionality reduction. Furthermore, it is useful for extracting dominant features which are rotational and positional variants, thus maintaining the process or effectively retraining of the model. Pooling shortens the training time and controls overfitting. There are two types of pooling. So it's one of them is max pooling and average pooling. Max pooling returns the maximum value from the portion of the image converted by the kernel. Max pooling also performs as a noise suppressant. It discards the noise activations altogether and also performs the noising along with dimensionality reduction. So it's kind of also obvious what it does from my slide. 
as you can see. Another is average pooling, which returns the average of all the values from the portion of the image covered by kernel. So average pooling simply performs a dimensionality reduction as a noise suppressing mechanism. So we can say that max pooling performs a lot better than average pooling, at least in practice. So the convolutional layer and the pooling layer together from the ith layer convolutional neural network. So depending on the complexities in the image, the number of such layers might be increased for capturing low-level details even further, but at the cost of more computational power. After going through the process, we have now successfully enabled the model to understand the features. So moving on, we are going to flatten the final output and feed it to regular neural network for classification purposes in theoretical side. So when we move forward, we come up to the final layer. So adding a fully connected layer is a usually cheap way of learning non-linear combinations of the high level features as represented by the output of the convolutional layer. The fully connected layer is learning a possibly non-linear functions in that space. For example, here is a as you can see in this slide, there is a simple convolution neural example. You won't try it in practice, but it also should work. So now that we have converted our input image in a suitable form, we shall flatten the image into a column vector. The flattened output is fed to a feed-forward neural network and back propagation applied to every iteration of training. Over a series of epochs, the model is able to distinguish between dom dominating and curtain low-level features in image and classify them using the softmax classification technique. So now we have all the pieces required to build a CNN. Convolutional, ReLU, and pooling. The output of max pooling is fed into the classifier we discussed initially, which is usually a multi-layer perceptron layer. Usually, the CNNs layers are used more than once. So, for example, we would use convolutional layer, ReLU activation, max pooling layer, again convolutional, again activation, ReLU, max pooling, and so on. So, we won't discuss this fully connected layer right now. We'll do this in practice, of course. So, CNN is a very powerful algorithm which is widely used for image classification and object detection. So, the hierarchical structure and powerful feature extraction capabilities from an image makes CNN a very robust algorithm for various image and object recognition tasks. So there is various architectures of CNNs available which have been key in building algorithms which power and shall power AI for a civil future. Some of them are LeNet, AlexNet, VGGNet, GoogleNet, RISNet, and YOLO and so on, it doesn't matter, there's a lot of, plenty of them, there's where to where you can choose. So there is the end of my theoretical convolution neural network tutorial and I hope at least I helped you a, a little bit to understand what is convolution, how it works and why it works, how we learn things and why it is so popular in vision recognition tasks. So. That's it for this tutorial video. Thank you all for watching. Good luck. I hope this was useful for you and see you in the next video. By the way, don't forget to subscribe my channel. I'll have uh, cool stuff coming in the future with TensorFlow, Keras and many more. See you next time.